All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to talk about building a tempo defense or how we defend tempo offenses. And I want to look at it from the perspective of how all these tempo offenses are doing what they do, and I want to see if we can create the same thing on defense. All right, make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat. Sideline replay company we use at Bishop Kenny High School. Used it at my previous stop. I've used it for the last five or six years. Uh, reliable, affordable, great customer service. You can get somebody on the line when you need them on game day. If you're looking to make the switch, make sure you check out GameStrat. Dome Hats, a headwear company we use, Bishop Kenny High School. Uh, the last three schools I was at, every school I've been at so far as head coaches use Dome Hats. Uh, completely customizable. You can get online, use their online hat builder. You can design your own hat, hat style. Uh, the logo you want on it, some embroidery, the enclosures on the back. Every hat has a story. Make sure you check out Dome Hats. Baker Sporting Goods uh, is the company we use for our sideline gear, our coaches gear, our practice gear, our spirit packs. They distribute our uniforms. We use them for everything that we do. We also use them, uh, the school uses them, and teachers, teachers and fans and other things we build through their store. So if you're looking for a one-stop shop, make sure you check out Baker Sports. Just Play, the playbook software we use, we use it for a lot of our team meetings presentations, uh, game plans, installs, playbooks, best play drawing tool on the market. It's the easiest for me to use. I absolutely love it. Make sure you check out Just Play. And then Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Uh, you can set them up right in your weight room at Bishop Kenny. We have ours in our weight room. Set them up right on the racks uh, inside our weight room. Elbows in, thumbs up, where our eyes need to be. Different coils. That, uh, that change, that you can change the leverage so as kids get stronger, uh, you can change the coils inside so it makes it harder to let the pad in. And tomorrow I am actually playing a round of golf with Anthony Schlegel, uh, the owner and developer of Difference USA, and I'm interested to talk with him about what they've got coming up, what they're looking at doing, uh, some uh, what they're trying to improve on, where they're going in the market. So it's going to be a round of golf, but it's also going to be a business conversation uh, with Anthony from Difference USA. So I, I'm excited about that. Make sure you check them out. All right, so uh, most of you know if you've been watching this channel for a long time, we, when I am calling offenses, I am a tempo offense. Uh, we are a no-huddle team. Um, and everything that we do when we start our, you know, who we are, what we do, how we try to practice is done in that hurry-up, no-huddle fashion. Uh, again, I talked to you the other day um, about some of the people I listened to at the Nike Clinic, and tempo was a big deal. Alex Golish, Lane Kiffin, uh, Mike Norvell talked about it. Dino Babers talked about it. Um, Kirby Smart talked about what teams are doing to them. Uh, so obviously tempo is a big deal in the world of football. There's still a lot of people doing it, doing it really well. We never really played as fast as I would have liked to. But what I talked about the other day was how they are doing what they're doing, right? So as a defense, what we need to look at is I think we all have, have been there where we're playing a team that, that goes really fast. And that week we've got to make sure that we work on certain things and we got to get more reps from the scout team and maybe we got to double up the scout team and work against two huddles and, and all the things that we do in our practice plan. But w what I really want to look at, and since I was a tempo offense, what I want to look at them for defense is all the things that they're doing uh, within the structure of what they do on offense, can we do those things on defense? Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. All right, so... The first thing that, that the tempo teams are always going to talk about is their operating procedure. How do they do what they do? How do they practice what they do? What are the, all right, what, are, what is the bread and butter or, or what is the bare bones behind how they're doing what they do? And a lot of times, a lot of them won't give up all the secrets because it's the secret sauce, right? But for us, I think it starts with, if you want to be able to defend tempo, it starts with your operating procedure. Every practice, when you practice, are you making your guys, whatever your, your system is, are you making your guys do it every day, right? So for us, the constant battle is everything we do, whether it's seven on seven, all right, or skeleton in season, seven on seven off season, all right, inside run, whatever it is, do we make our guys after every play get to the ball, get their eyes to the, to the signal caller? For me, I make it a habit all the time. I am going to stand... Okay, and again, we have everything videotaped. Our practice are videoed. I have other coaches, and there's offensive coaches there. They can stand wherever they need to be. I am always going to stand off to the side, and I'm going to get my habits. And every period that we have to make calls, I am going to make sure that our guys look to the sideline. So even when we do formation recognition, all right, we'll do it with two setups, what we call a rock drill, all right, or it's a, it's a formation period. We call it a rock drill. There's cans on different sides of the field, different hash marks. And there's skill players set up there that have cards that they look at for the formation. And we make our guys get a call from the sideline, line up, all right, and then when the whistle blows, they have to sprint to the other side, 
First thing they need to do when they sprint from one side to the other is they have to look at the sideline. All 11 guys on our defense look for the call. All right, we try not to, once we, once we get established and once we're in, we would love to not have to echo calls if possible. We would like all 11 guys to look to the sideline and all 11 guys are responsible for getting the call, knowing their alignment assignment, what they need to do in that call. Because when you start echoing calls and doing different things, well, if you run a certain movement or blitz pattern, six, seven, eight times in a game, and you're echoing those, those, call, echoing those calls, by the time you get to that fifth, sixth time, they now know, hey, that's your blitz. That's, their, that's what they're doing, and they start pointing some things out. So we'd love to get it to a point where everybody sees the signal. We don't have to make any calls. We always start off with our middle safety echoes the calls when he gets it from the sideline. Right? But the one thing that we don't want is we don't want everybody to be reliant upon or dependent upon the middle safety to get the call. We want them all to be trained. Soon as the play ends and I'm going to where I need to be, eyes got to go to the sideline, right? Operating procedure. Where do, do our kids understand? Do we teach our kids enough to understand where the next ball is going to be spotted? So on, on offense, the tempo teams always talk about, well, we have to get our alignment ready. The center's got to get ready and the guards and the tackles know how to line up and then our receivers need to know and talk the other day about guys, if you're in the fight, get in the, stay in the fight. If you're not in the fight, don't get in the fight. So this way the receiver on the right, if the ball goes to the left, he's not running all the way to the left because it helps them play faster. All right, but the big thing is where's the next ball going to be? Was it a positive run? Was it a long pass? Was it a sack and it's going to be back here? Getting kids and you think... It sounds crazy, but you got to teach kids the ebb and flow of the game. If it's an incomplete pass, we're going to be right back where the ball was on that hash because a lot of kids will start to wander around and drift, and it's like, all right, look, if we're trying to play and, and do things as fast as we can because we're playing against an offense that, that operates that fast, we have to understand the game, right? So if it's an incomplete pass, the ball's going to be where it was, whatever hash mark it was, whatever yard line it was, and there's going to be a little bit more time in between. They can't play as fast after an incomplete pass. All right, but yet if it's a run that's for three or four yards, now we've got to get to where the ball's going to be. Was it in the middle of the right or the left hash? Where's it going to be spotted? Where's the line of scrimmage going to be? Where's the judge spotting it so we can get everybody where they need to be while we also get our eyes to the sideline, right? So your everyday operating procedure. Are you doing that every day or do you just do it or put an emphasis on it when you're playing somebody that's going to go really fast? I try to do it every day. I try to make sure, you know, and... and in practice, if you ever come or watch anything we do, you're going to hear me say the word eyes a million times in practice because guys just don't understand. After each play, get your eyes to me. Get your eyes to the signal caller, whoever it may be. All right, sometimes in practice I have an assistant signal so I can stand behind and coach a little bit more, but somebody is always going to be signaling. It's something that we have to train. It's something that we have to teach. It's something that we have to do. It's part of the operating procedure. All right, your communication system. All right, so I'm very fortunate at Bishop Kenny High School. They had a system that they used on defense that they really liked. I came in, head coach asked, what do you want to do? You want to use your terminology or ours? I think ours. I said, well, I think if the kids already know yours, let me learn yours and let me put my stuff into yours. All right, and the neat thing about the system that we use is once we get going, a lot of our base situations, pressures, a lot of our things can be done in one to two words. A lot of our calls are just one word. So a lot of our pressures can just be one word, and they're grouped by families into different categories, and now we only have to say one word, and now they know the movement, who's blitzing, what coverage is behind it with just one word. So our communication system that was developed before I got here, all right, and I think it's pretty good, uh, it, it is built to communicate in the most effective manner. Right? So we don't have seven-word calls, eight-word calls. Everything we do is broken down into one or two words. Now, occasionally, what we try to do is we try to tie our words into the front and then the coverage family. Okay, So whether you're using colleges, whether you're using uh, mascots, whether you're using countries, whether you're using automobiles, right? It's the same thing offenses have done forever, so why can't we do it? So it's what we do. We group things into families, and eventually we get it down to where we can just, our base defense, we can just say one word, one signal, done. And everybody knows what they need to do, right? So how do you communicate? How do you communicate with your players? The offense does it. They talk about it all the time. They talk about getting things into one word calls or their tempo calls or their repeat calls, Xerox calls, whatever. We need to do the same thing on defense. We've got to teach our kids the same thing. If that is how the offenses are going to play, or we're going to face offenses that play that way, we've got to be able to teach the same way. right? They're trying to create chaos. We've got to avoid chaos. They're trying to get us on our heels with our communication, and they're trying to get us into simpler pictures. We need to be able to change pictures right, within what we do. So we've got to be able to teach the same way that they are teaching. right? You've got to fight fire with fire. Hybrid players. This one's been big to me for a couple years. I've talked about this on several videos before. When I, start, when I first started playing 4-2-5 stuff, we were trying to travel a 
nickel, a free safety, a weak safety. All right, we were flipping sides with our 425 fronts. We were flipping sides with our mic and our will. First year we did it, we got shifted, traded, motioned a bunch into some things that we weren't prepared for. In the offseason, I looked and I said, I'm not doing that again. We constantly got caught in some scenarios that I don't want to be in. We were a, kind of a fieldish defense, if you want to look at it that way. And then we got shifted and traded and motioned, and then our checks were the simplistic checks that the offense is, hey, if we do this into the boundary, this is what they check to. So I looked at it and I said, okay, the kids at the school that I was coaching at at the time, the safeties I have, right and left, they're not really that much different. I'm not recruiting them. I'm not on the road looking for certain body types. Our strong safety, weak safety, were basically the same type player. Was one a little bit physical, more physical than the other? Yes, but not overwhelmingly more physical. Did one run or cover a little bit better than the other? Yes, but not overwhelmingly, right? I didn't go out and actively recruit certain positions. I didn't go out and say, hey, we're a 3-4, 4-2-5, 3-3 sack. We got to go find these body types, right? It's not college. That's not what we do. So the guys that I had were very similar in nature. So I started thinking to myself, what if I just played them on the left and the right and I taught them passing strength coverages, run fits, away from passing strength coverages, run fits, right? More teaching involved, but they never have to move. You're never going to get us formation into the sideline. All right, so what we did was we started to eliminate the number of moving players, right? And then we cross-trained the Mike and the Will, and then we involved the nickel a little bit to say, all right, look, let's, in the offseason, when we get seven on seven, we get some other time, let's cross-train these guys to be able to play in the box and out of the box. All right, now, certain players, the Mike, the Will, whatever, they're never going to be involved in certain parts of the coverage. But we figured out real quickly that if teams are going to shift and trade motion or if they're going to play fast, our Will may be in a position where he's to the three-receiver side. We don't ever ask him to match anything vertically. That's not, what, that's not what we're doing. All right, But if he's to the three-receiver side, we want him to be able to play some of our base three-by-one components so that if we get stuck that way or if we get into the tempo world where I say, look, I don't want you moving sides. I don't want you changing sides. You've got to learn how to play as quasi-nickel, and you've got to learn how to play as the Will. Okay? So we cross-trained them so that they understood how to play to the single side, double side, three receiver side, so that when we started playing teams that went fast, it's like, all right, look, stay on that side, figure out where the strength is and what the nickel says or the free safety says, and now you've got to be able to play all these components. All right, so at first, when I first started doing that, people said, uh, you know, a lot of people I talked to at least said, I don't think you can do that. You need to travel. You need to put this guy with the strength. He needs to go away. He needs to go here. I pled my case and I said, look, this, this is what I think. This is why it's happening. This is why I want to do it. And there were certain people that said, no, you can't do it or you shouldn't do it. And I felt like it was best for us, so I went ahead and did it. Well, you know, wouldn't you know it, a couple years later, the term hybrid, and, and at that time, I didn't, I didn't use the term hybrid. That's not what I was saying. All right? I didn't, I'm not saying created it, came up. I just said, I want my guys to be able to play both sides. I want to cross it. So the big word for me was cross train. All right, I want to cross-train these guys to be able to play on the hash mark, down low, all right, and guys would say, well, we don't want that guy down low. He's not going to fit runs. Well, my guys aren't that much different. There's really not a big difference between them. So I would rather be lined up and be able to play everything I want to play without getting stuck, field boundary, strong, weak. That's my check for FIB, all right? It's, big, it's more important to me to get them to be able to play those things and to teach them how to do that than it is to say he's – 100 times better in the run fit than this kid is. Yeah, one was a little bit better than the other, but they were both very much, and I was trying to find kids that were similar. That's really what I was doing, right? So we ended up training hybrid players, but I didn't really know I was training hybrid players. I was just trying to get guys to perform in the way I needed them to perform. And then a couple years later, wouldn't you know it, I think it was, especially, it was definitely, I read something about it at Army and, and Jay Bateman and what they did against Oklahoma that one year. And, they're using hybrid players. They're using guys and they're teaching them how to drop and they're teaching them how to blitz and they're teaching them how to do this so that when they get stuck in all these different formations and tempo and the offense isn't changing, our personnel can match what their personnel is doing. Right? Because really, in essence, isn't that what the offense does? The offense in 11 personnel or the, the game we play nowadays, a lot of times the tempo teams, they got that one guy that can line up as a tight end. He can be a fullback, but they put him out wide and he can run routes also. And that's how they play really fast because it's second and eight and they go in some type of three-by-one set and he's removed and they get six yards and it's third and two and now all of a sudden he's in the backfield and he's pulling on count. So the offense is doing the same thing. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we do that? All right. And then base defense, all right, movement players. 
Good tempo teams talk about all the time how they, they limit the guys that are going to move in their formations. And they know the formations they're calling and they know the plays they're calling and how they need to get into things so that when we are in this formation and we run a play, I don't want these two running all the way over there while he runs all the way over there and guys moving everywhere. We can't play that fast. So they limit the movement players. All right? And that's one of the things that Alex Golish was talking about. All right? and, I, and I'm so fired up now to watch USF this year, not only on offense, but they got Todd Orlando on defense who's been an odd guy and, and, and a guy that's done some things a little bit differently. So I'm excited to be three hours away from them and get a chance to watch them and maybe travel down there. One of the things he talked about was they really, a lot of times in, in that personnel grouping, the back and, and the, the hybrid Y fullback sniffer, whatever you want to call them, those are really the only two guys that are moving. They, the wide receivers stay out there. If they start stacked on one side or that side, they kind of stay over there. That's how they play faster. Right? That's one of the methods they use. So we need to be able to do the same thing. So we try to, in our base defense, we try to eliminate, or I shouldn't say eliminate, I'm sorry, bad word. We try to focus on only having certain players that really need to move. Now, if you're not playing all that fast and we can match strength, all right, so like I said, we play tight three high, right? So if we can get the nickel where we need them and we can get the end where we need them and, and the anchor because a lot of our stuff is built on the end travels with them, they're both four eyes in our tight front, right? So we then came up with a way where in our base defense, we limited the number of movement players. So we teach our will to play like a Sam. We teach our Sam to play like a will. We have the body types to do it, all right? Our will's a returning player, leading tackler on the team. Uh, weightlifting meet yesterday, just jerked 290 pounds, pause bench 280 pounds, really good player. He can play in space. He can run. Am I going to ever ask him to match things vertically in three by one? No, but I think he could certainly be the inside part, and he plays palms already as a will linebacker. He plays to read already, so if we get to some three by one checks where I can make him play same as, then I don't have to worry about, hey, I really need the Sam over here, I need him over there. So the Sam and the will for us can be hybrid players. Our Sam is big enough to play in a box. Our Sam last year is going to play uh, college football at Davidson, played tight end for us also, all right, 215, 220-pound kid. He can play <coughs> in the box. You just have to teach him. So if you're going to do things where you're limiting movement or you're limiting the movement of your players, you've got to teach them cross-train. You've got to teach them to be hybrid players. So for us, in our base defense, we can line up in our tight three high stuff, and the middle safety is the only guy that's really moving. We can keep the Sam on one side. We can keep the Will on one side. We can keep the Mike where he belongs. Safeties already play one side. That's how we play. Our corners play one side. That's how we play. Middle safety is the only guy that's moving. So I've now narrowed down how many guys I move on defense because the offense isn't moving anybody. And I can teach the rest of those guys, hey, after that play, where's the ball going to be spotted? Get up. Get to where the ball's going to be spotted. You're on the left. You're on the right. Get your eyes to the call. Let's play. There's the formation. Let's go. Right? That's one of the things that we have done. And then also, you've got to be able to carry movement, pressure, rotations. Because what is the offense trying to do? All right? What is the offense trying to do? The offense is trying to get to a situation where they are creating chaos. All right? They are trying to create confusion. They're trying to make simpler pictures. All right? They're creating simpler pictures. They're trying to find the matchups that they want. All right? And they're trying to do all those things to disrupt how the defense plays. So in this fashion, we need to be able to play... And, and again, this goes back to communication and, and, and building things in your scheme. We need to be able to carry movements, pressures, and rotations within our base package that are very easy to communicate, that everybody understands, all right, that are simple calls. And for us, they're usually one word. And they can be anything from adding a fourth, five, six, three under three, four under two, hot or eyes, coverage, vision and break, sending six, zero sending six. All right, whatever it is, it's got to be a simple way to communicate and change up what you're doing because that's what the offense is trying to create. Okay, so for us, what would it look like? All right, and again, this was more of a, a philosophical talk today. I'm not going to get fully into, but for us, it would be very simple. So if you came out, and, and for argument's sake, if you came out and that's the first set that you've got, all right, and we line up, and our tight stuff, and we get to set it on the first drive, so he's there, all right, Will's there, Mike's there, there's our Sam there, all right, so we got our corner, what we would call our right safety here, middle safety, usually fitting off three for us, we have a corner and a left safety to the backside, all right, so you come out first play, we have a chance to line up, get lined up, you can't snap the ball that quickly coming from the sideline, right, so 
This is not a big deal. This is it, it's base for us. It's how we play. Middle safety makes the coverage. High safety. C. They got two removed. It's base defense. I'm going to play palms. All right. We haven't made another check. Nickel knows that he's to the strength. But for us, what we need to be able to do is, if at any time, this became on the next snap. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that became that on the next snap. Well, for us, if we really want to defend tempo, rather than moving the Sam, now we got to get into a situation where the Will knows how to play there. The Mike is in the box anyways. He's just has to understand, is he to the passing strike? Normally, the Mike for us gets to the passing strike, but we got to teach him both. And now the Nickel might have to learn how to play in the box. All right? And now when we see the picture... This side has two removed. They've got to make their call. This side has tight end flanker. They've got to make their call. And then we've got to teach the hybrid guys, all right, which side are you on, which component are you playing. All right, so that's our goal. So when we start our seven-on-seven seven stuff in the offseason, that's one of our goals. When we're doing half line, every Sam, Will, Mike we have, I want them to be able to play the inside or what you would call maybe the three-dropper in palms, which for us, when we play three high, that's the three-dropper. Then I also want him to play what we would call the palm dropper, all right, or that 2-3 guy. Two doesn't cross my face, three doesn't out leverage me. I've got to be able to script in our drills, all right. I've got to be able to script, and, and, and my linebacker coach, who does a great job with this, we've got to be able to rotate to where when we're doing half line, I need my Sam, my Will, and my Mike all to play that underneath palm drop. I need my Sam, and then I'll add also the middle safety to it. All right, my Sam... Mike, Will, middle safety, I need them all to play the three drop. Okay? And then like with our corners. All of our corners are going to play corner, and they're going to get reps at the high safety spot. They're all going to learn how to play both. Our safeties are going to learn how to play, all right, from the corner spot, the high spot, and the low, and the low spot. Sorry if the diagrams are getting a little bit confusing. All right, but the bottom line is, in our drills, we've got to teach our kids to play multiple things. Now... Will our corners ever be on the hash mark? Very rarely. All right, but we teach them the pattern match so they know that when they're at corner, all right, based on a release of two, play the high spot as the safety, and now that'll help you understand what we're trying to match and what the route combinations are. Now, why do we play the safeties at corner? Because as soon as we go to three by one, right, so as soon as we go to any type of three by one removed, one of the first things that we do, okay, is our safety is going to play with the middle safety, all right, what we call mix, other people call me, whatever you want to call it, stubby, whatever you want to call it, it's man on one, palms on two and three. It's now our safety's doing it. So I've got to teach this guy the same way I teach the corner in two reads. Right? It's no different. So when we're in our drills, we've got to rotate guys into different spots. Not only does it help us cross-train and teach hybrid players so that we can line up in different positions, it also helps guys understand the other component that you're paired with in the coverage. So if the corners understand how to play as a safety, and the safeties understand how to play as a corner, we should be able to match routes better. Right? They, they get it from a different perspective. Now, will our corners ever line up there? Not a bunch. Right? But there's nothing wrong with teaching them that and cross-training them. Now I've got the Sam in a position to play two read off the back like he always does. Right? My will is to the single side playing the menu that he's got. But if I cross-train him and we ever got stuck where this happened to be the will, I don't have to make a coverage check, and that's the Sam. If I train him to play those positions, I don't. when I get three by one and we're not set right, it's tempo, they're going really fast, it's into the boundary... If he's there, I'm okay with it. We can play, right? So what we've got to do, and again, is there such a thing as tempo defense? I don't know. Defending tempo offense is probably. But the thing I look at is somebody who's been on both sides of the ball. I've called both sides of the ball. I've been a head coach. I've got to see if the offense is doing all these things and creating a way. Now, the offense always dictates to the defense. I get it. They line up. They call plays. They, they do everything first, and we're more reactionary in nature. I get that. But if they can go out of their way to create this system of how they want to play, and their operating procedure and a communication procedure. Why can't we do it on defense? All right? If they're finding a guy that they like in the slot and they like him hugged up and they like him as a fullback and he's physical enough to block and be part of counter but, and wrap, but he's also good enough out here to run routes, why can't we find those guys? All right? So 
Why can't we do the things that the offense is doing? And that's the approach I'm starting to take with it. All right? I, I want to do, because I've called both sides and I understand what they're trying to do, and I've been a tempo guy, I want to do that on defense. From my operating procedure to my communication to hybrid players to cross training, I want to do all those things on defense to make us better prepared. Is there a tempo defense? I don't know. Is building a tempo defense the right title for this? I don't know. What I'm basically trying to do is build a defense in a similar mindset to the way the offense wants to play. All right? Now, if the offense comes out and plays in a huddle, we're fine. All right? We're good. It's, we have more time to make calls, but it's the same thing. We're not changing our calls. Everything we do is from an operating procedure, communication, cross-train, hybrid. That's our deal. That's what we do. So hopefully this helps you a little bit understand uh, what you need to do to, uh, to defend tempo offenses. Obviously, your practice plan and, and your head coach being on the same page with what you need to do, getting your scout players to understand what you need to do is going to be a huge deal. All right, but bottom line is offense is trying to attack us a certain way. They're coming up with all these neat deals of how they practice and how they give the ball to the official and how they – get everybody to get their eyes back to the coordinate. Well, we can do that on defense, too. Yeah, we don't have to worry about getting the ball to the official, but we can get lined up really quickly. We can not change sides. We can cross-train guys and have hybrid players so that we can handle it when it comes out and we're ready to go. A little bit more teaching involved for some guys? Yes. Do you not like a certain guy in the box? I get it. Right? So you don't have to do these things, but I'm comfortable with my Sam and my Will. I'm comfortable with them being in the box or walked out right now on our roster, so I'm going to do those things, and I'm going to let my linebacker teach the Sam how to play in the box, so that if those situations pop up in the game, we are good to go, all right? Just make sure that everybody understands which part of the pressure they're on, right? So if you're not changing sides and you want the pressure to come from the back, you have to have words to communicate to say, all right, look, it's the mic and the will when the back is there, but it's the mic and the nickel when the back is there because we're not switching sides. So you, again, not as easy as you make it out to be, but operating procedure, communication, hybrid cross train, all right? What's your base defense? Can you line up as quickly as they can play? Because they all have base plays, right? All right, it's inside zone, RPO with a glance, and we're going to go really fast, and we got access throws over here. Well, what is our really fast on defense? For us, it's check with me coverages, right? It's, hey, base defense, tight front, to, to remove, make a call. Free remove, make a call. Three tight, make a call. Single receiver side, play a menu, right? We've got to have our answers too. And then, just like they do, all right, we've got to, they're trying to create chaos with movements and, and trades or whatever. We've got to create chaos. We've got to move. We've got to pressure. All right, and we've got to rotate. Why? Because they want to make simple pictures. What do we want to do? Disrupt the picture. Three safety defense, especially three high defense, great for changing the picture on them. You've got multiple safety rotations. Middle of the field can be closed at any time. It looks like it's closed depending on where you play your middle safety at. To me, that's a better way to disrupt or a really good way to disrupt the picture if you're playing a team that three high safety defense can match up against. They start going 12 personnel, running it right down your throat, maybe not the best deal in the world, but that's football, right? We are a tight three high team. That's what we base. That's what's good for our schedule. That's what's good for our district. That's what we choose to play. Do we have other answers? Yes, we do. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. All right, hopefully you understand tempo defense, base defense, communicating, operating procedure. All right, if you are not a subscriber, please click that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on. You'll know every time we do a video, we go YouTube live. I got a YouTube live coming up tonight at 8 o'clock on the same very topic that we're talking about right now, running a tempo offense, defending a tempo offense. All right, so the, the talk will be tempo tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, make sure thumbs up, thumbs down, you like it, don't like it. Leave a comment every time you comment. I try to interact with people. A lot of good comments the last couple of days on some of the videos that we were doing, and guys brought up some really good points. And it's good to see that people are interacting with the video. All right, so all season, hope it's going well. Clinic time, hope it's going well. Hope everybody's healthy and safe out there. All right, and I appreciate everything you guys do for me, everything you do for Play Fast Football. Thanks for being on this ride for the last 10 years. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.